A year ago, I installed this deck for a new hot tub. It's had everything thrown at it this year, mostly incessant rain and a few extra surprises, and it was desperately in need of refurbishment. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I got it looking brand new again. I'll be running through the step-by-step -step process of cleaning and oiling a deck, and I'll be putting some of the UK's leading decking oils in a head-to-head -head comparison test so that I can tell you which one I think works best. A quick plea before I start, I'm looking for ways to make this sustainable now that I'm doing it full time and it's not always easy. Today, for example, I spent over 150 pounds on oils and hardware for this video. So if you like my content and would like to help me to keep providing it, it would be fantastic if you could visit my Buy Me A Coffee page. It's a bit like Patreon, but less hassle for you because you can buy me a coffee without actually signing up. And you can support me either by buying a coffee or by giving me a monthly contribution. Now I only set it up today so there's no content there yet, but for the monthly contribution you can look forward to behind the scenes footage of ongoing projects, an exclusive Discord chat forum which I'll be heavily involved with, you'll also be able to contact me directly, and I'm also going to have some pretty exciting monthly giveaways. I'll post a link in the description below the video, it'd be great to have you on board. Now you might be wondering why I didn't oil my deck when it was in this lovely pristine condition just after installation. Well, I knew it was pre-treated and I wanted to get the hot tub up and running for the kids as soon as possible to make the most of what was left of the summer. But I've since learned it's best to leave a newly laid deck for about six months before you apply any oil to it. As most decks come pre-treated or tantalized, as you can see here, and you want this treatment to erode so that the oil can properly sink into the wood. What you must do though, even if your deck is pre-treated, is treat those cut edges when you lay the deck because these are one of the most vulnerable, one of the first areas to rot on your deck. Clearly, if your deck isn't pre-treated, then obviously you can start straight away. But why do I need to oil it now? Well, it's actually weathered pretty well this winter. But as you can see from these visuals, the deck was looking a bit tired, mostly just dirty and a bit green in places. Also, I got a nasty surprise when I lifted up the insulated mat I laid back in August to find the foil had delaminated under the pressure of the water above it. And the deck was looking slightly rotten underneath because the water under it hadn't been able to properly drain away. Luckily, the damage was only superficial, as you'll see shortly. So what sort of kit do we need to use to clean our deck? Well, I've got a lot of tools, but I didn't have anything specifically designed for deck cleaning. So I thought I'd go online and see what was available, and I came up with the following. I bought this Osmo deck cleaning brush and telescopic pole from Wood Finishes Direct, and I picked up this Ron Seal deck cleaner and reviver in my local timber merchants a few months back. It says on the instructions to pour it directly onto the deck, which I did with this jug, and which would have been quite an economical way of doing it if I hadn't kicked over the half full jug twice during the cleaning process. The deck cleaning brush, which I initially thought was a bit small, was actually the perfect size to scrub each plank, and the telescopic pole, which I was a bit annoyed having to buy, it's a shame Osmo don't make the scrubbing brush to fit all decorators extension poles, of which I have a few, did at least grip the brush securely without any twisting or movement, and saved me a lot of back-breaking scrubbing on my hands and knees, as I would have had to do with a traditional scrubbing brush. Where the foil was too well adhered to the deck, I used a decorator's knife to scrape it away. They say you're meant to scrub in the direction of the grain, but I didn't pay any attention to this as each board has been randomly laid and it would have been a headache to work out the direction of each board. I was initially a bit skeptical about how well this detergent would work, particularly given the state of the deck below the tub, but I'd need to have been, and a combination of that and the brush had an almost instant impact as you can clearly see from these visuals. Ron cells say to leave the reviver on for 15 to 20 minutes. How long you leave yours on will depend on the weather. So you can see it's already drying after 10, 15 minutes. We've got to start pressure washing now. And so I worked in small sections, pressure washing off each section before moving on to clean the next. And when the deck was done and drying out, I went over a couple of areas again, which I'd evidently not quite cleaned thoroughly enough first time round. Let's have a quick chat about whether you should or shouldn't use a pressure washer to clean your deck. A lot of people say you shouldn't because it furs up the grain of the timber. For my deck where I only needed to rinse off the deck reviver detergent residue rather than bore out the dirt, you could say a hose pipe would have sufficed, but I've actually got a pretty rubbish pressure washer. This Karcher is designed for bikes and motorbikes and is sufficiently gentle I can put my hand in front of it without it hurting. So it's perfect for this job. You find the deck reviver penetrates quite deep into the wood and produces quite a lot of soap residue which needs to be thoroughly removed 
before you can oil your deck. And I did find this quite a long process and probably didn't remove all of it. So whether you use a pressure washer depends what type you've got and how badly degraded your deck is. If you do fur it up, it's not a big deal as you can always gently sand it as I did here with my random orbit sander where there was some residue from the EcoFirm foil insulation still adhered to the surface. And after all that cleaning, I was amazed to find the deck was pretty much in a pristine condition again. So now we're on to what I think is the trickiest part of this process, choosing the right oil to treat or stain our decks. Tricky, and I'm a case in point there, because when I was researching for my which way up should the grooves be on your decking, I came back from the timber merchants with a tin of this, Ron Seal Ultimate Protection Decking Oil. To find out it's not actually an oil at all, but a water-based product. So much for Ron Seal's products doing exactly what they say on the tin. Um, thank you Ashley Brooks for that gag. That was me falling for the ultimate protection marketing gimmick without researching what other products were available on the market. So the first thing I did was sound you lot out through a post on my YouTube community page and I got a wealth of information and opinions back over 115 comments to be precise. And to everyone who commented, I can't thank you enough for this. Thank you so much. I massively recommend you scrolling through those comments yourself. I put a link to the feed in the description below this video, but I'll summarize as follows. I'm afraid there wasn't much love for water-based decking products generally from those of you saying they just don't last to a paint chemist specializing in water-based paints saying only use solvent-based oils on your deck. And I'm afraid there wasn't much love for the Ronsi Ultimate Protection either, which in Nigel's experience only lasted six months. Both he and Dean deciding to redo theirs with Baratine oil and others have said has a horrible yellow tint to it. And indeed it is a fact that the Ron Seal Clear has a pigment in it and that's what gives it its UV protection. But these are only a few opinions, some people quite like the Ron Seal, but there were some standout winners with Baratine, Osmo and Mans consistently being recommended and also good things being said about the Screwfix No Nonsense Decking Oil. The next thing I did was stumble on some seriously good advice when I chanced upon the Wood Finishers Direct website initially to buy those Osmo cleaning brushes. I should point out here that I'm not being paid anything by Wood Finishers to mention them in today's video and they did give me a 10% discount on the first few things I bought which included the Man's UV decking oil we'll come on to in a minute. So thanks to Ben in Creative and Alison in Technical because much of what follows comes from what they told me. Whilst I can give you my thoughts today, ultimately what decking oil or stain you choose boils down to a very personal choice. Based on the condition of your deck, whether you want an easy to complete maintenance that needs regularly redoing or a more comprehensive one that you can apply and forget about for a few years. Whether you want a decking oil or a stain and for the difference between these two there's an excellent wood finishers blog which I'll post a link to in the description below this video. Today's video is all about decking oil not stain. Whether colour is more important to you than performance and whether UV protection is important or actually whether you prefer that weathered grey look. And you've also got to factor in the decline in performance of some solvent based oils over the last few years and the increase in performance of some water based. Sounds confusing but hopefully it'll be a bit clearer when I've given you my thoughts. So here's a sneak peek of what Wood Finishers Direct found out in their scientific trials. Now I stress that this is just a sneak peek of their findings. I suspect when they publish them there'll be a lot more information. First up we've got Man's Premier Decking Oil. It's solvent based and was found to be the best all rounder. It's meant to be truly clear in spite of the UV protection because crucially it uses a UV blocker rather than a pigment to protect the deck from the sun. And the way it's been explained to me, pigment based UV protection like you get with a Ron Seal is like a t-shirt on the deck, whereas UV blockers like you get in the Mans are more like a sunscreen. I'll let you know my thoughts on that in a minute. It got 5 out of 5 for stain resistance and durability and achieved a high application per square meter. I've used up just over half the tin doing two coats on this 13 square meter deck. And it comes in a tin like Liberon and Osmo. Can't say it's ever really registered with me before the significance of whether something either comes in a tin or a rectangular container like this. But actually it does make sense. You can only mix something like this by shaking it up. Whereas if you've got a tin you can use funky tools like this cyclone stirrer and the thought that's gone into that smacks to me of a superior product. 
Next, we've got the Baratine, another solvent-based oil. It also offers UV protection, and like the MANS, that's UV blocking rather than pigment-based protection, and has marginally less performance than the MANS while still being a very high performer. And then we've got the Osmo, another solvent-based oil, the most durable tested, but no UV protection. And finally, the Ronseal Ultimate Decking Oil was deemed to be the best water-based all-rounder with pigment-based UV protection. So on the back of this advice, I decided to buy a five litre tin of the Mans UV decking oil in clear, as I wanted to keep the colour of the deck as close as possible to the untreated original. I also bought this decking brush and tray set. If you're used to using a 10 litre paint scuttle, you'll find this tray ridiculously small and flimsy, and easy to slosh oil out of when moving it around the deck. This brush on the other hand, oh, we like this. The brush obviously fits that Osmo telescopic pole and with it the oil just went onto the deck effortlessly. You meant to wipe off the excess using a microfiber cloth but whilst I had one ready such was the porosity of the deck and the control of the brush in applying just the right amount of oil I really didn't need to. The deck was now looking pretty good and with one coat on you could already see the benefits of the oil with the rain the following day beading nicely on the surface and a couple of days later in a suitable break in the rain I applied a second coat and in so doing completed the job. And the rain we've had since shows just how impregnable the deck now is. And I used this Osmo brush cleaner and thinner to clean the oil off the brushes. You'll find after a couple of days the oil and thinner separates allowing you to recycle much of the thinners for next time. But has that UV blocker in the MANS affected the colour of what is basically meant to be a clear oil? In the same way as perhaps that Ronseal pigment based UV protection has done, which might explain those comments you saw earlier on where people were complaining about the yellow tint on their Ronseal treated decks. Well, at first sight, you can't deny that it does have a bit of a yellow tint, particularly when compared to my two year old fence, which has never been retreated. However, compare the piece of the deck that's been sat under the eaves of the garage, but otherwise weathering, and the two look pretty similar. So I think it's fairer to say, rather than any pigment in the oil actually changing the colour of this deck, I think what the man's oil has actually done is rejuvenate the colour that was originally in the deck before the sun got to it over the last year. Either way, I'm not bothered because my primary concern is to make sure that the deck is well protected from the weather. I'm less worried about what colour it ends up and any other aesthetic considerations. But that's just my hunch. If you want a product that's actually been designed to revive a grey sun damaged deck, check out the Osmo Gel or the Fidders Crystals with the Fidders Crystals working out cheaper. So after spending a whopping £145 on these five decking oils, all in the name of research for you, my lovely subscribers, you have subscribed, haven't you? I thought I'd do a bit of a comparison between them. And what better than to use this table that I made at the same time as I constructed the decking last year, which has weathered along with the deck and which handily has five boards which coincides with the five oils that we'll be trying out today. First up was the bizarrely coloured Ronseal water-based treatment. Sorry Ronseal, I just can't call this an oil. Next, the screw fix with its funky pouring mechanism, and then the MANS, followed by the Osmo, and finally, also with a funky pouring mechanism, the Baratine. Considering these are five clear oils, the contrast in colours is crazy, with the MANS and Baratine being the most similar. After watching that man's so beautifully sink into the deck, it was so disappointing applying the Ronsil, which just sat on the surface like some sort of ineffectual milk, or being more kind to it, it reminded me of applying a water-based varnish and there was no sign of it penetrating into the wood. The Screwfix No Nonsense decking oil, on the other hand, seeped into the wood beautifully. We now know how the man's applies and it looked very similar to the Screwfix oil. 
the Osmo is undoubtedly thicker than the other oils on trial, which makes sense given its superior durability in the trials, and I was intrigued to see how I'd get on with this almost black oil, but actually it looked pretty similar to the other two oils once applied. Although I was so used to the other oils sinking completely into the wood, I neglected to wipe away the excess residue, more on which in a minute. And finally the Baratine went on in a very similar way to the Screwfix and Mans. And so what do they look like now that they've all dried? The Screwfix, which I don't think has a UV filter, probably looks the most natural, closely followed by the Mans and Baratine, and the Ronsil has a slight yellow tint. Funnily enough, the Osmo stands out as being darker than the rest. And I'm really cross about this because I've basically messed up my scientific test. Because of its wax content, the Osmo doesn't penetrate as far into the surface whilst providing a protective outer wax layer. So you really are supposed to apply it thinly and I guess wipe off any residue that remains, neither of which I did. So I've done another quick test this afternoon on that piece of decking you saw earlier cut in two, comparing the Osmo against the Mans, this time ensuring no residue was sat on the surface. And with that slightly different composition, the Osmo took a lot longer to dry. And whilst the colour of these two is different to the others because the spare decking board hasn't been sat in the sun all year, I think you'll agree that the Osmo looks very similar to the Mans. And then it's quite interesting when you simulate rain on these sample pieces. The Mans, Baratine and Screwfix in that order are beading the best, which suggests that they are repelling the water the best of the five. And then you've got the Ron Seal, a little bit of beading, but also a little bit of evidence that it's sinking in as well. Remember, we've only done one coat of each of these. And finally, the Osmo, there is a bit of beading, but not a great deal. So what does this mean? Given that this is meant to be the most superior and had quite a thick coat. Although 15 or 20 minutes later, the Osmo seems to be in the quickest to dry. So read from that what you will. So where does this leave us and what are my conclusions? Well, given the superior waxed enhanced properties of the Osmo, and its peerless durability, it was by over 50% the most durable and stain resistant in the trials. I was actually going to suggest this as my number one pick. Certainly before I did that beading test at any rate. Because I'm not particularly bothered about UV protection, but I am bothered about protection from the weather. And I don't really want to have to repeat this process every 12 months. So this would have been the order with Osmo at number one down to Ron Seal at number five. However, I just checked the prices online and the Osmo weighs in at a whopping £55 for 2.5 litres. So over £100 for the five litres I would have needed. Or maybe actually because it goes further, I could have got away with one tin. So on that basis, I've revised my listings and I've got the Mans back at number one with the Osmo relegated to second equal. Yes, you're paying for the brand. Yes, it goes further and has that wax protective layer, but I'm just not sure I'm happy to pay up to four times as much for that privilege given that I'll probably end up treating this deck every two to three years anyway. And what about the water-based alternatives? Well, it is the way things are going, and I do salute Ron Seal for embracing the future and trying to get this right now. As I suspect in 10 years time, we probably won't be able to use the solvent-based oils. Or perhaps by then we'll all be laying composite decking, so preservation will be irrelevant. But right now it's not cheap. My tin bought from a local timber merchant cost me £46 as against the £29 you'd be paying online at wood finishers. And so even with its environmental credentials, I can't be using a water-based product like this right now that sits on the surface of the deck, as I'm pretty confident it won't last anything like as long as the solvent-based alternatives. For completeness, I should point out that Ron Seal also do a solvent-based oil. And I understand it's a good product performance wise, particularly given the price bracket, without doing anything too flashy. So a couple of final points. I've compared five oils in today's video, which I think isn't bad. I had to draw the line somewhere. I did want to show you Osmo's anti-slip oil uh, and ordered that at the last minute yesterday. But unfortunately, in a rare error, Os uh, Osmo, Wood Finishes Direct have sent me this instead, which I think is a, just a tinted oil. So that'll unfortunately have to wait till next time. And actually, if you look after your deck, as we've discussed today, I don't think you'll have any problems with it getting slippy. But inevitably, I've missed a few, like Liberon, which also performed very well in the trials, and I would say is in the same bracket as the Baratine and Mans in terms of performance and price. Sadlin, I'm told, is also of a similar quality, but at £36 for 2.5 litres is more expensive than the Mans, Baratine or Liberon. And then we've got Ticarilla. They've got a cult following, and at £75 for a 3-litre tin, a price to match. 
All of these, apart from I think the saddle end, was mentioned by you kind people in the comments below that community post. So for the rest of you, have a delve through those comments if you want more information. And a quick final point on ongoing maintenance. Regular sweeping, or in my case, generally use of that leaf blower to remove pollen, sap, dirt, bird feces, etc., is recommended because if these things sit on the deck, when it rains, you'll have an ideal breeding ground for mold, mildew, and other nasties to grow and feed on them. If you can, carry out a yearly clean and revive like I've done, topping up on the oil treatment if necessary. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, everything I've talked about today will be in the description below this video where you can also access my Amazon store. You can access the description on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. And finally, if you're new to my channel, I'm, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. See you soon.